Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of Flutter Explained. We are back and today we want to make a Flutter 2.2 patch rundown. I have the feeling that uh, Flutter Engage is just one day after and suddenly Google I.O. 2021 arrived and showed us a lot of new and interesting stuff. For that we want to go first about the new Dart version that arrived and after that we will have a deeper look into the different parts of Flutter. And now without further ado, let's get started in this very first episode after my vacation. Let's get started. In Dart 2.13, we get more information about Dart Nile safety. 93% of the top 500 packages in Flutter and Dart has been migrated to Dart Null Safety. That's fantastic news, especially if we think about the journey to sound null safety. That means this is maybe the right moment to upgrade your packages. And if you are not completely sure if you are able to hit Flutter Pub Outdated, which allows you to see all the different packages. You will get four columns and each of the column will show you in which version you can move now, which version is resolvable, so your packages are depending on each other. And if you have a package that is on a different version, you can now maybe upgrade. And that would be perfect. Also have a look into the latest column because the latest column will show you the latest possible version of your packages. All right, but now let's get further. The first feature that I would like to introduce you with Dart 1.3 is the type aliases. Sounds very strange, but what's fantastic about type aliases is that you can give every type in your program and in your code a different type name. What does that mean and what idea is behind of that? The authors of the article of the Dart 2.13 article gave us an example that is fantastic in my opinion. We all know that JSONs are mapped in Dart as a map string to dynamic because it has always a string key and it could have anything on the right side, right? An object, a boolean, a number, a text. And that is a representative in Dart as a JSON. What you can do now is just say, okay, there is a JSON and map string dynamic is behind of it. So you replace every occurrence of this map string dynamic with JSON. Easy enough and you get a better readability. But this is not everything. Don't forget, you can now also deprecate all type names or old type names that were maybe not that good. So you replace them by a type alias allowed your users to migrate easily and deprecate the old class name and slowly migrate to the new and better name. This allows you to make a way better maintainable code and also your users that they will take right way and directly implement your solutions the best way possible. All of that was way too easy for you and you are more interested in the real dirt of Dart then you are maybe interested in the FFI tweaks that the Dart team has done. They improved two things or two major things. They allowed now to have array structs and packed structs on the lower level of the API. So if you are interested in that stuff and you want to create interrupts between different um, system environments, this is your chance to improve your code even further. But that is not everything. The Dart team also improved performance and size of their applications. How did they do that? They split it away the debug information and you can activate this mode by adding a minus minus debug mode splitting or something like that. And with that, you have the possibility to get rid of all the debug messages. Be careful though, because it will make it harder to debug your application at the end, but it will decrease your app size tremendously by several percent. You and your company are interested to work with Dart and Docker together? Well, the Dart team is too. They finally released um, officially supported Docker images that you can now use in your projects. The Dart and Docker team work close together to implement the AOT compiled Dart implementations. That's fantastic news because now you are able to use these Docker containers right away and without any more additions. Also, this is now an official support, which means it is tested, dependent checked, and you don't have to worry that they will drop the um, support so fast. That's great news and I hope you are really using that. 
that's so far to the Dart 2.13. And I really like this um, whole implementation features and news that arrived. But now let's head over to Flutter 2.2 and let's have a look what it has for us. The Flutter team made some huge improvements in the web directions. I didn't even know, but there were been server service workers who fetched always a new index HTML to replace it with the old one so you could see the new state. That was very interesting. But there was a problem. Sometimes both of the ones have been hold, and the problem was that the stale index HTML did not get removed. The problem with that was you needed as a user reload the page. This is now being fixed and the benefit of that is that first of all you don't have to download so many stuff anymore but also the stale version is not anymore in the cache and will be replaced right away. Very important for you is you will have to regenerate the index HTML file in your web folder. What does that mean or what is the easiest way to do so? You just have to dart create dot inside of your project file or flutter create dot depending on if you are working on a dart project or a flutter project. Of course they also improve the performance a lot but this is as the flutter team always does right. The Flutter team also improved how texts are rendered inside of the web engine. That has a lot of benefits because now we are easier to distinguish between hover effects and links effects and so on and so forth. Also it improves how text is visible in your web rendering area. That's fantastic news because with that we are easier to implement the text there and make sure that all of that works. Also accessibility is a large topic for Flutter team and I really love that because I know a lot of people who use mostly keyboards or have problems to make distinguish and use a lot of screen readers. So um, the Flutter team implemented now an accessibility feature that you can tap through the different elements and you get also the screen readers rendering it. They created a little video and inside of it you can see how they tap through the different parts and you hear what the different elements are. You would do that in web with the area label but in Flutter it's not that easy, right? So now we have these fantastic features and help a lot of uh, people who maybe have problems with identifying the different objects. iOS in performance improvements. <sighs> There have been a lot of discussions in the last couple of months, right? Uh, thanks to Tech Lead, I guess, who created this video where he said Flutter is dead. Again, he, he is very, well, deep into dead Flutter. I don't know what he has against Flutter, but I think he wants to provoke. Uh, anyhow, let's jump back to the iOS performance. The Flutter team made a lot of effort to improve the iOS imp uh, performance and they are still working on it. They already improved the performance by 40% for most of the animations like sliding and stuff. And now they are working and tweaking on the engine to improve even the different parts that hit the most iOS users. Of course, this will take some time, but they promised it even this year. So there are also advantages and we have soon the same butter smooth performance that every iOS developer has and wants. And I can understand that and be patient, be patient, we will come there. But besides of the performance things, there is also a fantastic improvement by the installation part. It is now possible to install Flutter apps as incremental downloads. What does that mean? It sounds very complicated. It's quite easy. You don't download always the whole app if you make an update. You only update what is necessary. With this per improvement, the download size can be increased very large uh, or largely and that is fantastic because me as a user and I don't have a Wi-Fi connection always, especially in Germany. So the problem is if you are needing to download an app update that is essential, you don't have to wait anymore or you don't have to download so much data space, which is fantastic, which does not take too much mobile data for your phone. Flutter now introduces adaptive design. I really like the idea because if you are coming from a web background or in general a web developer or a mobile developer, we always take care of a lot of different screen sizes, right? Large screens like desktop, smaller screens like tablet and even smaller ones like mini phones, right? Or even watches nowadays. All of those have different screen sizes and we usually have to take care of that. But why is it now adaptive sizing? or adaptive um, layout. Well, in Flutter, you don't have only to perspect different 
uh, screen sizes, you need to also take into account all the different input types that you can do. Mouse and keyboard, touch, swipe, stuff like that. It's completely separated from a developer perspective because we have to take all these different possibilities into account and they behave completely different. Flutter made there a lot of improvements and also gave us more tools into our hands. For example, they updated their flutter.dev page and also Kevin Moore created a fantastic video. You find the links, of course, down in the video description where he explains all the different patterns there and gives us more information on how we can tackle adaptive design in general. Psst, hey, I want to tell you something. This is now the moment where you hit the like button, subscribe to our channel if you haven't yet. And one little side note here. In end of June, I will have a talk at Geekly about responsive design and adaptive design. And it would be fantastic to see you there. I will link it down in the video description. It's for free, so why don't you head over there and help me and support me? That would be fantastic. And now let's go back to our program. And now, besides of everything that we already discussed, there is one fantastic new thing that's called more material UI icons. We all wanted them and they are so many, but the most important maybe is we have now Dash inside of our material UI icon set, which allows us to put Dash everywhere if we want to. And if you are even animating it, that's the real deal. We should do that. All right, so we have a lot of new material UI icons, but also the text inputs has improved. That means you can now per keystroke, command C, control C, whatever, copy and paste uh, information from your texts, which is also a fantastic new feature and comes a little bit to that web improvement to improve the different text layers with a new engine for that. So keep in mind, you can now copy and flutter texts, which is pretty cool. I guess. Another very interesting feature that they implemented is the scroll bar behavior and scroll layout or scroll bar layout, sorry. The good thing about these two things is now we have way more control about the scroll bar in general in Flutter. Also, they improved that keyboard shortcuts or ran uh, random entered keyboard don't uh, lead anymore to scrolling behavior inside of the app right, of the uh, right out of the box without any additions there which is a fantastic idea because usually you don't want to scroll and write something, for example, that was always a little bit weird and is now fixed. A very interesting side note here is I found some, um, you could say, life signs of Fuchsia when I researched or researched there a little bit because I could see inside of the Flutter Dev documentation something about Fuchsia. If you don't know Fuchsia, there is a new OS from Google developed that is currently in development but maybe I will do a video for that later. Also, there have been upgrades in pub.dev because what happened inside of our packaging system, the Flutter Favorite awards have been um, increased or the packages that are part of the Flutter Favorites has been increased. And what I really enjoy there is that the Flutter community packages, the called plus packages, got like, uh, you could say, like a very special honor from the Flutter favorite part because they really got added all of them. Also, the Flutter Fire package got added. Well, no real surprise there because it would be weird if they wouldn't. And also a lot of different other packages. So check out all the different packages. I will link them also down in the uh, description so you can see which ones are now Flutter favorites. If you don't know what Flutter favorites are, I will link you also a video up there where I explain in detail all the different parts of the Flutter packages uh, or from pub.dev. Cool. Besides of that, there have been also future announcements what the Flutter team and Dart team will work on next. And of course, this is very interesting for us too, because I work at the moment with an M1 Mac and I have a lot of problems from time to time because, well, it's not quite there yet, but Flutter made an amazing job there. They really did to support M1 as good as they could. And I really love that. But besides of that, they want to increase that performance improvement for macOS ARM64, I guess. That is one of the future plans to even reduce the jank inside of iOS even further. They want to allow us to have deferred packages or packaging inside of Android, which allows us to download different parts of the app 
only when we need it. So we have modules for all that stuff. Wow, really, it would be amazing to have that because that would decrease the size of our applications even further. Cool, but we are still not finished. There are still some things that I would like to share with you guys. And for all of you who currently struggle with the null safety improvement and have to migrate to null safety or want to migrate to null safety, or are currently in the transformation process or looking for some inspiration to get into that transformation progress. Vince Verga created in his fantastic podcast Flutter 101, uh, which I really, really like to recommend to you, talks with Randall Schwartz about uh, a GDE, of course, for Flutter and Dart, about null safety and tips and tricks on how you can implement null safety into your applications. Also the link down in the video description and yeah. All right, but now let's head over to the last section that I would like to introduce you, which is the Flutter app that I introduce you here. I would like to introduce you to a fantastic app called Olia. I have very hard <laughs> time to pronounce that, but uh, I will share the links up here, uh, maybe a logo or something, which is a fantastic Flutter app and website where you are able to watch very long videos of YouTube, tutorial videos mostly, for each topic, for every topic. So if you search, for example, for Flutter, you will find a free video from Tadas Petra where he talks like one hour about Flutter and how to introduce it. And the best thing or the clue of this app is that it will remember the timestamps where you have been inside of the different tutorials. And this is, of course, a fantastic benefit there that you can easily navigate there and check out the different uh, tutorials and you can see your progress on these tutorials. So you don't lose any more the track that fast. And I'm really happy to announce that to you because it's really nicely written and I really love uh, that it is there and free for all of us. Cool. Now we talked about Dart, we talked about Flutter, we talked about uh, um, the podcast 101, just here to it, it's fantastic. We talked about um, the Uria, uh, the new app that I would like to share with you. But what happened here, right? I was one month gone and sorry for that guys, but at the moment we are moving and we had like some struggles there and we have also a lot on our plate at the moment and I started a new job and all of that is currently like on my shoulders so the videos will come a bit more slowly I guess in the future so prepare for the one video video every two weeks for now if it's getting faster or if I can create shorts or something you will get there of course thank you for watching enjoy the rest of your week we hopefully see us in two weeks thank you everyone hit the like button if you haven't yet subscribe to our channel and now, thanks for watching. See ya guys. Psst. Good luck with that. And in the meantime, let me know what you have achieved. No, we don't say that. We don't say that. Are you there? Sorry? I will have a talk for Geekly in the June, uh, July or June or July. <clears throat> the Dark team works closely with the Docker team to create finally corresponding reproduced, no, but now let's head over to flutter2.eu and, 